Designing the Mind Chapter 1 The Theory and Practice of Psychitecture Mind as Machine In the past we humans have learned to control the world outside us but we had very little control over the world inside us Yuval Noah Harari 21 lessons for the 21st century Every era attempts to explain the human mind in terms and metaphors of its dominant technologies For Plato the mind was a chariot For Descartes it was a mechanical clock for Freud it was a steam engine today the most common analog for mind is the computer although it's true that our brains are not literally digital computers built on silicon circuits and binary logic the modern metaphor of the mind as a computer is by far the most powerful and comprehensive one we've ever had our hardware is the brain the physical substrate made up of neurons chemicals and electrical impulses our software is the world of our experiences of the mind our sensations emotions and thoughts all experienced internally in the mind but all have physical phenomena behind them and can be influenced by external events chemicals and technology Our minds don't generate emotions or cognitions arbitrarily. They are patterns coded into the software inscribed by millions or even billions of years of natural selection. No word we speak or action we take is an isolated event. However spontaneous it may seem, and the same goes for the purely internal processes of thinking and feeling. They all flow from a determined system in the same way the outputs of a computer spring from the algorithms built into it by its programmers. The reason we cannot perfectly predict human behavior is that our minds are the most complex machines ever to exist so far. They do not run a single loop but an intricate system which factors innumerable inputs and calculations into its behaviors. The brain, like it or not, is a machine. Scientists have come to that conclusion not because they are mechanistic killjoys, but because they have amassed evidence that every aspect of consciousness can be tied to the brain. Steven Pinker, The Mystery of Consciousness. The fact that our minds are machines does not preclude the vast richness of experience of which they are capable it simply means that at its core the ineffable complexity of human existence boils down to an operating system we can study and increasingly understand furthermore to compare our minds to machines is not to suggest that they have been set in stone by evolution and are doomed to iterate themselves perpetually until death Our genes don't determine everything we will become but they do determine how much we can be shaped by experiences during our early childhood adolescence and adulthood which for all is quite a bit It is possible for you to alter your brain in ways that result in functional changes modern medicine has developed drugs and surgical procedures for treating diseases disorders and injuries to the brain Prescription drugs are available to treat everything from ADHD to obsessive compulsive disorder to severe anxiety implants can even be placed into the brain to rehabilitate stroke patients or stimulate nerves for treating parkinsons or depression <coughs> Healthy people can also utilize technologies and practices to further improve their brains your lifestyle behaviors like sleep diet and exercise 
have a massive effect on brain health and function. Growing evidence suggests that mindfulness meditation can increase concentration, self-awareness, and overall well-being. Some evidence even suggests that devices such as the transcranial direct current stimulation, which are now offered as consumer products, are able to improve learning, sleep quality, and mood. You can take nootropics, which are typically readily available chemicals which have demonstrated an ability to enhance cognition, increase focus or memory, boost energy, or even heighten creativity. You could even consume psychedelic drugs like psilocybin and LSD, which modern neuroscience indicates can stimulate new neural connection, ease anxiety related to death, and treat addiction and depression. There is an entire movement known as transhumanism, concerned with modifying the human body, brain, and mind, and taking the evolution of human nature into our own hands. It is defined by the Humanity Plus organization as the intellectual and cultural movement that affirms the possibility and desirability of fundamentally improving the human condition through applied reason, especially by developing and making widely available technologies to eliminate aging and to greatly enhance human intellectual, physical, and psychological capabilities. Transhumanist thinkers believe that someday in the not-so-distant future, we'll be able to augment the brain and mind in ways nearly inconceivable today. Further pharmaceuticals and microscopic brain implants could repair, regenerate, and revamp brain cells. Genetic engineering could alter the mind biologically, increasing intelligence, creativity, or any other desired quality. Virtual or augmented reality technology may become so advanced as to become indistinguishable from reality, connect directly into our nervous systems, and allow us to live in the worlds currently unimaginable. Furthermore, an advanced understanding of the mind may allow us to perfectly stimulate or simulate the human brain through digital computers and upload our consciousness to the cloud. Organizations such as DARPA and Elon Musk's Neuralink are already working to create brain-machine interfaces. These devices would allow our brains to connect directly to computers, convert our thoughts into bits and back again, and augment our intelligence, communication, and more. Theoretically, this allows us to effectively merge with artificial intelligence or with other people to form one radically intelligent and capable mind. <clears throat> when transhumanism refers to technology as a primary means of effecting changes to the human condition, this should be understood broadly to include the design of organizations, economies, politics, and the use of psychological methods and tools. Max Moore, The Philosophy of Transhumanism As fascinating as the potential for future modification of the mind may be, most of it is inaccessible to us today, leaving us only to wait and contemplate. But there is another type of modification, a kind of software transhumanism, which is already available. There are tools that can be unlocked right now by anyone without any external technology. We might call these tools psychotechnologies. The most powerful way to improve the brain at this point in history is through its software, through our thoughts and actions. Many of us would love to program our minds to work according to our preferences, just as we might program computer software. Our organic brains, however, do not work in the exact same way as computers do. They don't simply do what they're told. We have to understand and work around their nature if we want to change their programming. Rather than keyboards and command lines, we have our cognition, which can be a robust tool if used properly. Although it may seem like common sense to anyone who has ever learned something new or developed a skill, 
The idea that brain can change has become fashionable in recent years. Neuroplasticity refers to the brain's ability to change and reorganize throughout the life of an individual. The ability to adapt to changing conditions has always been crucial to our survival. So this capacity has been hardwired into the mind of higher life forms. You can build new neural pathways and reinforce or diminish old ones through learning, conditioning and practice. In fact, it will be impossible to prevent the modification of your mind. Everything you do or experience alters your mind. Even sharing pictures of your food is a form of practice that strengthens the connections between certain neurons at the expense of others. Multilinguists, professional musicians and academics with encyclopedic knowledge are living proof of the incredible human capabilities for neuroplasticity. Even more so are the victims of brain injury whose brains amazingly find ways to rewire themselves so that another part of the brain takes over the functions of a damaged area. All animals have software which is modified on a daily basis. Every animal learns. However, most animals don't try to learn. No creatures besides humans are familiar with any kinds of deliberate practice. It is doubtful that a chimpanzee or a dolphin ever determined that there was something wrong with its own mind and attempted to modify it. But humans do. We modify our minds because our software lacks some desired functionality. Um, speaking Italian, for instance, or because it has undesirable functions. Speaking with a stutter, for example, the capacity for this modification appears to be virtually limitless, but few people utilize it to its full potential. The modern fascination with neuroplasticity has led many to try to optimize their intelligence, memory, and concentration. People obsessi obsessively track and optimize their sleep, nutrition, and exercise regimens but people who obsessively and directly optimize the structure of their brains for flourishing Lee are less common this book is less concerned with intellectual learning and general competency development and more with psychological adaptivity and well-being the default human mind is an inherently disorderly place to be. The odds of being well adapted to this world by default are virtually none. The reasons kids cry and scream so much than adults is not because their brains are less developed. It is because experience in the real world forces you to develop coping strategies over time that give you increased control over your mental state. The tantrums, agony, Irrationality and impulsiveness of a childhood represent the epitome of a slave to one's own developed or default software. Societal pressures work to pull you up to the line of psychological adequacy, and psychotherapy can be used when society falls short. But these aims are far too low. Falling within the current normal range of psychological health is nothing to inspire to. We are interested in far exceeding this line in psychological greatness. We want to structure our minds in the ways that will lead to our deepest fulfillment. But there is no such force that naturally pulls you above this line. This is why we have to carve out the path towards the peaks of psychological well-being ourselves. A new vision of enlightenment.